Hello, my name is Dr. Anthony Basil, and I'm here to talk a little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of online learning. But I think what I'd like to do is see how I can shift the focus a little bit and say, what can we do to make the disadvantages actually improve our learning opportunities? So after doing a little bit of research, we've got a kind of typical list of advantages and disadvantages that we can have a look at. And I've put together a tag cloud uh, from some of the resources that I've researched and, and looked through. But what I'd like to do, as I say, is focus in on some of these disadvantages and look at strategies and ways that we can actually turn that around and make it an advantage. Right, so let's start off with the misconception that e-learning is boring. How can that be improved? Well, making the learning opportunities, the events, more engaging is one approach. Moving from that traditional training design, which is very content-driven, into a kind of web 2.0 learner generated content approach this is more informal learning bt did a fantastic project a few years ago called dare to share what they did is they had the employees actually generate the content by making small videos so issues or problems that they were addressed in the office were made into solutions that the employees were able to, to tap into. Now, the, the beautiful part about this was that this, the staff themselves became the promoters. So it shifted that culture in the organization to a learning culture. People were excited about learning and sharing what they had learned. Another issue about e-learning is that it does tend to be very text heavy. Can we make that into a situation where instead of being text driven, that we can actually apply the learning that's, that's going on? Well, one approach to this is with work-based learning. I worked at the Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning for over a decade where as a, a senior postgraduate program leader, uh, we were doing continuing professional development work with people that were full-time in the workplace and, and had lots of experience, years of experience. And so we were able to do the APEL portfolios, accreditation of prior learning. Not only that, but we would set up the degree programs so that they were doing action projects in the workplace. The nice thing about this is that we were able to expand the degrees, not only undergraduate, but to master's level and all the way up to doctorate level. So I've been supervising students in these projects face-to-face uh, -face and online using a blended approach and had fantastic results. So a, a big concern that e-learning people have is about isolation, that they feel uh, alone. How can we shift that into a social network learning model? Well, again, changing that pedagogy, changing that instructional design from that content-driven approach to a model where the learners can help generate the content, where there's a peer-to-peer -peer support that takes a, a lot of pressure off of the tutor. They're not just one-to-one -one contact of student to tutor. You're getting all of the stakeholders engaged. This requires, though, that you have very good induction resources. As an Adobe International Education Leader, I have over a decade of experience in working with different software systems and platforms where uh, I can help us to design and develop 
resources that not only help the students, but the faculty and all of the stakeholders. Now, an important element then of this social network learning model would be tapping into our alumni. So with this approach, we're able to get the professional social network developed. There's this sense of kind of working in silos, working in isolation. We may be doing a lot of really exciting and good things, but people don't know about it. How can we spread this out? How can we turn this around into an advantage? Well, one approach is by having these online events or, for example, a face-to-face -face kind of showcase. Now, um, at the Center for Excellence, uh, I was the director and producer for a monthly webinar program. And it was fantastic because we were able to get the students, the stakeholders involved, come in for an interview and share their stories of success. A fantastic model that we can develop off of is the Learning and Skills Network, where they take their monthly webinars and then tie that into an end-of-the-year showcase event. Now, wouldn't it be fantastic to tie that into the community? I'm uh, an avid supporter of the Park Run, and uh, they've got Park Run for Kids now. What a fantastic opportunity to link our program with the Park Run community and encourage this through these types of online or face-to-face -face professional social network events. Well, another issue uh, that is, is often a concern is the compatibility of technology, people having the right tools and, and knowing how to use them. But things are shifting now. There's a, a, a convergence into mobile technology. And I've been doing a lot of work with augmented reality. I've worked with a production company in uh, central London, invited them over to work with our students, and they had a fantastic opportunity to get hands-on experience with augmented reality and virtual reality. And the, 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 the company was so excited that what they did is they offered a Dragon's Den style contest. So the winning student actually got to work with the developers and produce their phone application. I've also worked with a computer simulation games company out of Cambridge. A, a fantastic opportunity for the students to learn. Using these computer simulations, this is a fantastic way to work on team building skills and other skills which the, the students will need. So how can I summarize? Well, well, at the bottom of this screen um, uh, is a QR code. If you take your phone, pause the film, you can scan that, and it will take you to the recording of this talk. What I can see is not only the advantages and disadvantages, but linking to the strategies that emerge from this. So we can take these lessons learned and we can expand our e-learning to also include e-marketing. In the webinars that I produced, when not only did we have fantastic e-learning resources, but we would also get video clips of the students as testimonials. Having that peer-to-peer e-marketing -peer e tool on the website was fantastic. We can expand our online revenue opportunities, again, linking in with that end of the year professional showcase event, hooking up with different organizations in the community, and tying that in, of course, with our alumni, getting our alumni to link in through a professional social network so that they can be involved with our current students, but then also prospective new students giving different taster events. And finally, our programs and our modules can expand using a variety of different approaches. For example, the work-based learning type of approach with APEL portfolios and expanding into action projects. 
and developing all the way to a doctoral level. I hope you found this discussion interesting. And if you have any questions, please do email me and contact me. I'm happy to open up a dialogue. Thanks very much.